Okay, so I'm going to show you now how to take um, this bar graph that we made before, and I, I have a video on how to make this. I'll put the, the link to that video right here. Um, so uh, I'll also put a link to that in the, in the description below. But I'm going to show you how to make this graph look a lot closer to what you would see in um, a scientific publication, specifically in my area, which is in physiology. Um, so right now you look at this and it looks like a, a fairly generic graph that was made in Excel. Um, there's a lot of things that uh, Excel does that researchers who publish tend to not do or they do in slightly different ways. Or um, Excel does or doesn't do some things that um, publications would uh, require. Um, and so I'm going to show, try to show you how to best um, get something from Excel to something that would be um, adequate for uh, publication purposes. All right, so first thing that I would do is I would add some sort of error bars to this. So error bars tell us something about the variability of the data. Um, and um, it's something that some people use standard deviation, but more often in my field at least, it's going to be standard error of the mean. So I'm gonna quickly calculate standard error of the mean for, um, for this average, uh, average supine heart rate, which is 60, and the average um, standing heart rate, is, which is 67. So I'm just gonna move this uh, t-test result out of the way for now, so I'm just dragging it down. Um, and then let's do, um, let's put, do standard deviations and let's do sample size, so n value. Um, so in order to, to do standard deviation, you can just do, uh, Excel has a function for that, so you do equal standard deviation or start typing it out. And you're gonna see the second one, when, once you get STN, you're gonna see standard dev for population and standard dev for, um, for sample. Um, we are not doing population statistics here, so we should be doing sample. So I'm going to double click this, and then I'm going to um, highlight the data that we want. So this is under the supine heading here, so let's do all the supine data. And you can either hit um, N parenthesis and then enter, or um, Excel knows that if you don't do the N parenthesis, that just means um, you are essentially being lazy, but it, it will put it in for you. So I hit enter, and then here is our standard deviation using the sample, um, uh, the sample equation for our supine group. Now let's do the same thing for standing. So equal, start typing it, double click the standard dev for the sample, which is the dot s. Highlight all the standing data, enter. Okay, so here are our standard deviations. Now what we need to do is figure out how many um, people are in each of these. So they should be the same, but we'll do it independently anyways. Um, so an easy way to do that, so we're gonna do another uh, basic Excel function here. So type in the equal sign and start typing count. And so you can see this description here of the, the standard count equation. It counts the number of cells in a range that contain numbers. Um, and because all these are numbers, so all of our data is numbers, that will tell us how many numbers we have. Um, so let's go ahead and use that. So we can just double click that or we could have just did the open parenthesis and highlight all the data in this column, Hit enter. So that tells us we have 24 people uh, 24 people's worth of data and that's true if you look at our participant ID it goes from one counting every number up to 24 um, and we can do the same thing for the standing column so an easy way if you have uh, the same exact formula if, is you can just sort of click on this little box in the bottom uh, of the sort of outlined cell and just drag it over um, and you can see that it did it at relative referencing, which means it moved our referencing over one cell, or one column because we dragged the formula over one column. So now we have everything we need in order to calculate standard error of mean. Unfortunately, to the best of my knowledge, there is no standard error of mean calculation in Excel. Um, I wish there were because it's really not that difficult of a calculation. Um, let me drag this down some more. Um, so. Standard error of mean, usually abbreviated SEM. So let's put that in. 
And now what we need to do is we need to do a, a custom formula because again, Excel does not have um, uh, this formula already programmed in the way it did for the other ones. So type in the equal sign and then we are going to take the standard deviation and we are going to divide that by uh, the square root of our sample size, so our n size. Um, so it, we are going to use the equation that Excel does have uh, pre-programmed in for doing square roots. So if you start typing in square, all right, right there, the first thing it pops up, so SQRT, um, so square roots, tell it we want the square root of this n value, do the n parenthesis, and hit enter. So our standard error of the mean for our supine data is 1.96. And again, I'm just going to copy this over for uh, to save some time. So now we have our standard errors for our two averages for supine and standing blood, uh, supine and standing heart rate. Notice that they are not the same um, because it is uh, standard errors calculated from the data within a category or within a um, condition. Um, so Excel does not make standard errors very easy to do. Um, it's not that hard, but it's not as intuitive as a lot of the other things that it does. <clears throat> so if you click on our, our chart here, it's going to open up this chart tools tab that wouldn't have been there otherwise. So if you go to design within that and go to add chart element. So go down, you'll see something that says error bars. And um, we'll just go ahead and hit this more options because we're going to have to go into that anyways. And so what it's going to do is throw up some random error bars here. So that's what these um, black lines are. Um, and it's just whatever number, I guess it looks like it's two that they put into that. Um, so that is not our error. Um, so just putting up that is not uh, what we need. Because again, we need 1.96 and 2.61 as our error bars for the supine and then standing heart rate. Um, so what we can do is we can hit this custom uh, bubble and then hit specify values. And it's going to ask us what we want the positive error and the negative error to be. So by positive, they're meaning, um, if you can look in here, there's a, there's a error bar that goes upward and then there's an error bar that goes downward. So above and below the mean. Um, for us, it's the same. The positive value and the negative value are the same. So we'll just put in the same data for both. Um, however, again, it's different for the two conditions. So if we click this little um, box here, it's going to want us to highlight our data. So let's go and highlight both of these at the same time. It's important that you do both at the same time. And then do the same thing for the negative. Highlight both at the same time and hit OK. So now you're going to notice that these bars are slightly different from one another because it's now showing the standard error uh, um, that we calculated for each one individually. All right, so we can um, do a lot of other things here to pretty this graph up as well. Um, let's keep going with the standard error bars. Uh, some people like having a what they call um, in, in Excel having both directions for the error bar, so it going up and down. If we wanted, we could just make it one or the other, so let's make it just up for a second, so hit plus and see that it got rid of the error bar going below the mean. You can do minus, which goes just below. I'm going to go ahead and keep both because I think that's a little more typical um, in the, my area of science. Um, you can also get rid of or uh, change the, the cap, which means uh, you had this a bar like this, so it gets rid of the sort of T going across the top of the bar. Um, again, I, I think having the cap looks a little nicer and it's probably a little more common, but some people do um, make error bars without the cap. Um, so I just wanted to quickly show you that. Now let's go ahead and get out of error bars for a moment. And, um, excuse me. And then let's change the color of these bars. So most of the time, you're not going to see um, people publishing uh, graphs in color. And the reason for that is most journals are going to charge you if you publish a graph in color, and it's not a, a small fee. Um, and so it's 
kind of unnecessary to have this color in there so most people are going to want to make it something on, along the gray scale so white black or gray essentially um, another reason for getting rid of the color is a lot of people do still print um, documents they don't read them digitally and most people at work don't have access to color printers just because most work places are trying to be cheap and so they um, they give everybody just black ink um, so if you were to print something in color you wouldn't be able to distinguish the colors anyways um, so the colors are pretty much unnecessary so let's go ahead and change that though so click on the bar itself there's this uh, button here that says change colors and let's just pick something gray for now um, yeah that's probably fine I, I think if it was if I got the perfect so I don't particularly love that so let's actually change that up um, let's do no fill so we have we'll, we'll have um, there we go no fill so we're gonna have white bars and then let's do um, nice solid lines here so let's do black for the lines and then let's increase the width here so 0.75 pretty skinny lines so let's make it um, yeah, 0.2 looks pretty good and let's see if it'll let us change the error bars it will so that's great because those error bars also look a little skinny for me um, so it's also 0.0, 0, 0 0.75 so let's increase that to um, 2 as well there we go and so we're getting a little closer here um, we can also make uh, just to distinguish between the bars a little easier let's maybe make them different colors let's see if it'll let me do that it should yes so I just have one bar highlighted instead of both of them this time and then let's let's make this one uh, light gray and then the other one is white all right so that's we're getting a little closer now most of the time in uh, sort of an educational setting you would want to have a graph title um, most uh, students as well as teachers enjoy seeing the graph title it lets you know what you're looking at quickly but in a scientific publication um, this the graph is going to be referred from the text and there's also going to be a description below the graph that tells you what it is um, so the graph title is uh, redundant at that point and so we don't really need it so let's just click it and hit delete um, so that uh, gets rid of that and gives us a little more space for the bars themselves. Another thing I would do is get rid of these horizontal bars, especially since we don't have a uh, fill here for this bar. We could have made it a white fill and then it wouldn't show the, these horizontal bars through it, but it doesn't really matter because we're just going to click these. Um, so make sure that you have them highlighted like it shows now with these circles and then hit delete. Alright, so getting much much closer let's try to change up some of these these titles the uh, everything in Excel in my opinion is uh, a little too um, too thin All right, we need to increase the uh, thickness so that they print well and so they stand out from the page a little bit so I'm gonna increase right now I'm increasing the thickness of the uh, essentially the 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 bottom of the bars this uh, let me get off so you can see what I'm talking about this bar right here that goes across below the the bars um, so I increase the thickness of that it also has it as this uh, strange gray color for some reason um, again since it's going to be printed in black and white black which I just changed it to is going to print an awful lot better than that gray bar um, so let's do the same kind of thing with the y-axis so I'm going to click the y-axis um, and let's see if we can change so I guess for the numbers it has the the, the uh, controls up here so let's make it so that I don't want that change the letters to again to make them black instead of that gray that it chooses by default and let's do a bold um, so that looks pretty good uh, let's do the same thing for all the titles so make everything black bold it and then these titles down here so black and bold 
All right. So now at this point, I would say that's a pretty good graph. It would be nice if we could expand the width of these bars just so we don't have all this white space. Let me see if it'll let me do that. Um, so yeah, gap, um, gap width. So maybe this will do it for us. All right, so that's going the wrong way. So let's just go the other way. There we go, much, much better. And now looking at this with the, the thicker bars, these, um, these titles, both on the X and Y axis, they just look a little too small for, uh, for the bars. So let's increase their size. Um, 14 looks pretty good. Let's do the same thing for the Y axis label and 14 again. So here we are. I would say at this point we have a pretty good graph um, going. Um, I'm not a big fan of the fact that it doesn't have uh, a y-axis bar, kind of like it has this x-axis bar. What we do need to put in here is something to tell us what the statistical values uh, or what the statistical test told us. So um, I showed it in a previous video. I did a t-test and our, um, our p-value is below 0 0.05. So there is a statistical difference between the supine and standing heart rates um, of this data. So let's add to this um, an asterisk because the asterisk is the most commonly used um, symbol to show significance. So I just added, I went to insert and I added a text box. So in that text box, I'm just gonna type a single asterisk and that's it. Um, it needs to be, again, a little big and bold so it prints well. So let's do, let's do something like 18, that looks good. And let's change it to bold. And so, oops. Um, what we typically do is we put it up above the um, error bar, just like that, as close to center as you can get it. And what that tells the reader, and you would describe this below the the uh, below the, the figure, but it tells the reader that this bar is different from this bar. So again, the standing um, heart rate is significantly greater than the supine, the sort of control condition. Um, for this uh, set of data. Um, and so at this point, what I would typically do is um, try to export this in some uh, very high quality uh, format. So it, it's kind of one of the drawbacks of using the Microsoft packages, so Excel, um, PowerPoint, any of those to make graphs is they don't export that well, which is the main reason why most people in research do not use um, Microsoft Office pack or Microsoft Office software in order, to, in order to do their graphs. But there is a workaround to this. I'm going to put a description or a link to this in the description below. I might even copy and paste some of those um, instructions. It is definitely a workaround. It's not an ideal situation, but it will allow you to get uh, more dots per square inch um, for your exported image, which um, will take this from being uh, something very grainy once it gets to a finished product to something that looks a lot more crisp and clear. And it's a lot more like what you would get from a professional, um, professional grade graphing program, like what a lot of researchers use. Um, but I hope that you enjoyed this and that you got something out of this um, and, and now that you can potentially go and make graphs that look just like publication quality graphs.